There is no greater tradition in the state of Iowa than the Register's annual Great Bicycle Ride across Iowa. For 45 years, RAGBRAI has been a unifying force, bringing together people from all corners of our state, all 50 states, and many foreign countries. They come to Iowa not for the mountains and the oceans and the physical landscapes, but for the unparalleled hospitality that they receive at each community along the way. On, although it is, the far, it is the largest event of its kind in the world, RAGBRAI is far more than a bike ride. RAGBRAI is the ultimate tradition where friends and family reunite, strangers make lifelong connections, and communities express their pride by providing thousands of riders the time of their life, night after night, again, on this, uh, night after night on the seven-day journey from the Missouri to the Mississippi. After 45 years, one might expect the ride would grow tired and numbers would begin to dwindle. Quite to the contrary, RAGBRAI is as strong as it has ever been. Riders and uh, repeat riders and first time and first timers alike anxiously await the unique experiences that lie ahead on the 46th ride this summer. My name is Jeff Frew, and I have the pleasure to serve as city manager for the city of Iowa City. We are beyond excited to be able to be a host community for the 46th RAGBRAI route. While RAGBRAI has been through all 99 counties and through Johnson County many times, it has been 42 years since Iowa City last hosted. This summer, that 42-year drought comes to an end. Like the famous advertising slogan, good things come to those who wait. The stop on the last evening of RAGBRAI will be a memorable one for all the riders, their support, and the cheering public. We want to showcase why Iowa City is one of the best college towns in the world. And while we're proud of the many new world-class facilities and the entertainment venues that dot our landscape, what really distinguishes Iowa City is the energy of our community. Iowa City is alive with energy, excitement, and an enthusiastic vibe that riders will feel as soon as they pedal into town. The 400 miles that they have ridden to get here will be a distant memory as they catch the Hawkeye spirit and experience the best in hospitality that a community can offer. I'm going to end my introductory remarks by saying that this is not a City of Iowa City event. For us to do this right, we need an entire community support. We need the community to take ownership of this event. Thankfully, we have been blessed by an outpouring of support since the announcement was made from individuals and key, or, key organizations. A few of those partners, Think Iowa City, the University of Iowa, and the Downtown District are here today to help us unveil our logo, theme, and give you a glimpse into the host day activities. Let's welcome Josh Schomberger, president of Think Iowa City, to the mic for our logo reveal. <clears throat> Good morning and thank you, Jeff. I certainly want to echo my thanks and appreciation to the city of Iowa City, Johnson County, the University of Iowa, Pete and Liz that are here today, the, the Iowa City Downtown District, and the very large uh, cycling community here in Johnson County. The primary reason we are here today is to unveil the 2018 official Iowa City RAGBRAI theme and logo. Obviously, with this being Iowa City's first time hosting since 1976, we wanted to do it right. And in this town, the one person you can count on to get it right is Herky the Hawk. So please enjoy this short video that we've put together with Herky.
All right, now we've had a great variety of discussions for how this year's RAGBRAI theme can best represent Iowa City. In these discussions, there were two items that made the greatest connections. One, the most iconic building, both in the city and on the University of Iowa campus, is the old Capitol. And two, the university's worldwide recognition of our literary and writing prowess. So how do you connect the book world to the cycling world? That's where we've created the play on words, book it to Iowa City. We've been fortunate to work alongside Dale Ahrens and the University of Iowa Athletic Department's chief graphic designer to help develop this terrific 2018 Iowa City RAGBRAI black and gold logo. It's been officially licensed so that all sales of merchandise with the logo on it will go back to benefit RAGBRAI and in turn our beneficiary who Jeff will share with you momentarily. There's the shirt. These official shirts produced by Underground Printing just across the way here in downtown Iowa City are available beginning today on our website, iowacityragbrite.com. Any business with a licensing agreement with the University of Iowa can also produce this merchandise. This special arrangement is unique to Iowa City, and we're hopeful that many local and state licensees will partner with us and spread this logo around Johnson County, Iowa, and beyond. Aside from the community awareness and quality of life impact that hosting a RAGBRAI overnight has on our community, another big reason we're so excited to always welcome RAGBRAI back to Johnson County relates to the economic impact. In 2015, when Coralville hosted RAGBRAI, our survey-based economic impact model reported visitor expenditures in excess of $1.2 million over the 24 hours that over 15,000 visitors were in town. That's $1.2 million spent at local restaurants, gas stations, hotels, convenience stores, and retail establishments. We anticipate a similar impact on July 27th as we begin welcoming the riders from Sigourney. It's now my pleasure to turn the mic over to Nancy Bird, the Executive Director of the Iowa City Downtown District, who will talk about all that we can expect on Friday, July 27th. Thank you, Josh. Uh, we're extremely excited to announce that the last night of RAGBRAI will highlight the culinary offerings from over 100 of our downtown restaurants and bars. We will shut down the streets of downtown Iowa City to cars and establish an open container area that will be great for community and riders to come downtown and stroll with drinks, eat local food, and enjoy the entertainment, similar to the 20, uh, 2017 downtown block party. For those of you who aren't familiar with that event, the downtown block party drove approximately 30,000 people to downtown Iowa City to engage in live music, games, and public art. We're looking to do something very similar for RAGBRAI. The main stage for the event will be located on Clinton Street, facing south at the intersection of Iowa Avenue, adjacent to the University of Iowa Pentecrest. The old Capitol will be a phenomenal backdrop for the last night's party. Entertainment will include several stages of live music, games, and other surprise elements that will be announced at later dates as plans refine. We're also very fortunate to be hosting this year's VIP party for RAGBRAI, which will be located adjacent to the main stage near the University of Iowa's Pentecrest. All in all, we believe the writer's final night will be one that leaves them talking for some time to come. It will be an authentic Iowa City event that we hope encourages our visitors to come back again and again. We'll have more updates on entertainment as they are available. Back to Jeff. Well, I am very proud to announce that any proceeds that we make from hosting RAGBRAI will be donated to the United Way of Johnson and Washington counties. Not only does United Way help support over 30 nonprofit agencies in the area, they also provide direct support for events like RAGBRAI through their volunteer recruitment and management process. Like they do with Jingle Cross and Fry Fest, United Way will be assisting uh, with our volunteer efforts with RAGBRAI. Their direct involvement and the significant impact that they have on our community makes them a natural fit to be the RAGBRAI beneficiary. I'd like to acknowledge the United Way staff uh, that is here. We look forward to working with you uh, through the RAGBRAI process, and we hope to uh, raise a little funds uh, to help uh, next year's campaign. <clears throat> I'd like to thank everybody for coming to the logo unveil today. Uh, again, we need your help to make this successful. 
Uh, if you are a business and you want to be a part of this, we have sponsorship opportunities. You can contact any one of uh, us up here uh, to get started with those conversations. We also need volunteers. You can go to iowacityragbri.com and fill out a form uh, to indicate interest in volunteering. And uh, like Josh mentioned, t-shirt sales are a huge part of the uh, financial equation to make this work. So please uh, go out and uh, purchase a, a t-shirt off of iowacityragbri.com. And uh, most of all, keep checking back to that website, uh, to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, for uh, the many updates uh, that are to come. So with that, I think we'll take uh, any, any questions uh, that are out there. Yes. Yeah, uh, I mentioned closing down the downtown area. Exactly uh, what streets are you yeah, we're, we're still uh, determining exactly what those parameters will be. It'll be very similar to what the block party was last year, which really Iowa on the north uh, will likely include Clinton uh, this year as well, uh, all the way down to um, really the, the College Street entrance to the Ped Mall down there, um, and then likely Lynn Street as well. Yes? Um, is there or will there be like a, a separate specific identity online, like on Facebook and stuff like that, for the Brad Bry Iowa City event? Yes, uh, in terms of just the social media sites that are out there, yes, we currently have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram uh, accounts right uh, right now, so you can uh, uh, follow those accounts, and, and that's probably the best way to get uh, information in a timely manner. When riders come through Iowa City and they see this logo, what do you hope that they all take away when they see something like this? You guys want to take a shot at that? Mix up the speakers. Well, you know, I got in trouble at the Brad Bry announcement party in Des Moines when I said that I believe everybody in Iowa wants to grow up and be a Hawkeye. Uh, <laughs> And some of the folks in Cyclones uh, country reminded me that there are some Cyclones in this state, um, quite a few of them. But, you know, I hope that people are very proud of, um, of our community and, and its university uh, town gown partnership. Uh, you know, we are recognized all over the world for our literary heritage. We just hosted the entire world here for the 10th anniversary of the UNESCO celebrations. We hosted the best wrestling nations in the world just a week and a half ago. And so... I hope that uh, they, first of all, enjoy their stay very much. I'm confident they will, uh, just as all other visitors. But they walk away uh, learning something maybe a little new. Maybe they, they've never heard of somebody named Kurt Vonnegut or Flannery O'Connor. Uh, maybe they'll get a chance to see Dan Gable walking around downtown Iowa City, and that'll be a special moment for him. Uh, or Herky, which will be out and meeting everybody. So. <laughs> We are, uh, we've talked uh, to my counterparts in Ames at the CVB there, and uh, you know, we, these sort of house divided shirts are all across the state and have been a, um, something that's a staple for football. You know, we're talking about uh, kind of a united Iowa uh, shirt, and so we're looking forward to partnering with them, and we want Ames and Iowa State to do uh, just as good of a job as we hope to do, um, uh, except for the, the post-event survey. We want to be ranked at least a point or two higher than them. So we'll see how it goes. Jeff, have you, um, do you know the status of the ped mall work and the gateway work during this time, and how might that affect writers? Yeah, we've, we've had a lot of questions about uh, the construction and the, the timing of trying to go after the RAGBRAI uh, bid. I, you know, if, if we waited uh, until construction stopped around here to, to put in a bid, it'd probably be another 42 years before we even had the conversation. So we felt what, what better way, especially when uh, the, the downtown business community is going to be a little bit stressed with the Ped Mall project, let's bring in a special event if we have the opportunity to. Uh, and let's showcase that we're, we're a city of, of progress. Um, so uh, we, have, uh, we, we will be under construction in the Ped Mall, particularly the, the north-south uh, leg here, the Dubuque Street leg. Uh, however, we've worked with the contractor to make sure that uh, when RAGBRAI comes, everything is, is as neatly as it can, uh, kind of tucked away and, and, and safeguarded for the event. So um, we really don't see that as, uh, as being an impediment to the, the downtown festivities. Matter of fact, we think it's going to provide a lot of support to the businesses that uh, probably could use the support during that time. The Gateway Project, this is the last year. That's the Dubuque Street entryway into our community. It's the last year for this project. Um, we're going to be tying in the Park Road Bridge. It presents some challenges, but nothing that we can't work around. 
Um, we do um, expect that there will be campers at City Park, and we want to make sure that they have uh, safe, easy access to the downtown area, and we're confident that we can provide that despite the, the uh, finishing touches that will be taking place on, on Dubuque Street this year. Is there a route yet for mapped out for where riders will go once they come into town or when they head out of town yet, or is that still kind of in the plan? Uh, they'll be coming in on, on Sand Road, and they'll be leaving on Sand Road. But in terms of how they're navigated once they hit the Iowa City limits, we're still working out those details. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, you're looking to uh, t-shirt sales for this box. Uh, can you say what the, your goal is and uh, how's the money going to be apportioned for? Um, we're, we're, we don't uh, have a, a final number yet. We're still working through, so entertainment, for example. We're still working through um, uh, you know, a band to bring in and some of those details. Um, we do think T-shirt sales will be an important part of the revenue stream. Uh, because we were looking uh, to drive as much business as we can to the, the, the private sector down here, there's probably going to be a de-emphasis on beer gardens and things like that. We're going to try to take, have people take advantage of the natural infrastructure here that we have with over the 100 uh, businesses, uh, restaurants, and, and, uh, and bars down here. So while a lot of communities depend on those beer garden sales, we are going to depend less on those. And thus, you'll see us put a greater emphasis on things like sponsorships, on things like t-shirts. And uh, hopefully, the businesses are the ones that uh, really see the, the, the benefit of that, of that direct spending. I don't have some exact, any exact figures for you uh, on what we're trying to raise now. I think those pieces are probably still a few weeks away. You mentioned that there will be camping at City Park. Is that the official camp location? We don't have an, an official location yet. We're going to have to have several campgrounds to accommodate um, uh, everybody here. Uh, you know, we've been told to prepare for over 600 RVs, for example. Uh, and then we, of course, have thousands of riders. And there's different expectations uh, for campsites. So we'll, we'll have multiple campsites, and we're still trying to determine which one will be the official campground. Uh, hopefully that, uh, I would say, probably by the first of the month uh, coming up here, we'll have uh, that announcement ready to make as well. Okay, if there's no other questions, uh, we'll close it down. Thank you again for, for coming out. Thanks to the partners, Think Iowa City, Downtown District, University of Iowa, Herky, awesome of you to be here. Thank you. Um, we'll stick around if there's any other questions, but uh, stay tuned. IowaCityRagBride.com is where you can get uh, all, your, all your details. Thanks.